All right, welcome back, everybody. We're talking about algorithms. We'll start with a definition and then get into some more details about how to express them in languages and other things. Okay? So you recall uh, that we're part of an APCS principles uh, pilot, and we're also one of the national leaders in the APCS principles space. Algorithms is one of the seven big ideas. So we're now at big idea number four, but they're not ordered in any way. This is just one of the things you're going to see. So this is the first uh, lecture in a whole series of lectures about algorithms because it's a really fundamental piece of this course. We start with a definition. The definition comes from the, from the curriculum framework, which says the algorithms are precise sequences of instructions for processes that can be executed on a computer and are implemented using programming languages. So you've probably seen algorithms before. The key here is that you can express them in many different techniques. And finally, at the end of the day, you're putting them into a programming language to actually implement them. That's the idea of that. Um, however, people might say, oh, you know, algorithms just must be relatively new, because computers are relatively new. Computers came out in the 40s and the 50s. So therefore, you are only have algorithms since the 40s and 50s, right? Wrong. Very, very wrong. Algorithms predate thousands of years, thousands of years. So if you look back at humanity, almost everything you've been doing, uh, we've been doing as humans, um, dances, ceremonies, ha how to hunt a uh, woolly mammoth correctly, is an algorithm. Chase after the woolly mammoth. If he turns to fight you, run away. If he goes away, then gang. I mean, there's all these algorithms that are part of life, part of li early man life. Recipes, building blocks. There's a beautiful picture of uh, basket weaving that's been done for you know, thousands of years. Uh, all is a particular algorithm for how to weave those, weave those threads together. Um, Babylonians even had, had the ideas of early mathematical algorithms some 3,400 years ago. And genetics, genes actually contain algorithms, which tell the genes how to then move forward. Pretty cool stuff. So what have you seen in Beauty and Joy Computing so far? So here are some of the common algorithms you've seen in some of the labs you've been working on. Um, how to compute the length of a word, whether a word appears in the list. And you'll see that at the end, if the list is sorted, we can be a little bit more clever about how to find a word in a list. How to interact with a user and what to do after that. Um, and comparing words. So if you had an early homework for that, where you were looking at how to do a version where you had a, a guest word and a word that the user was typing and what letters were the same. So you're already working on that a little bit of that. Okay? So you've seen that before. Algorithms you may know that are outside of, C of Beauty and Joy of Computing. Did you guys know, this is a kind of a cool little factoid, did you know that as you type in a credit card number, every once in a while you type in a credit card number wrong and it says, this is not a valid credit card. Have you ever had that happen to them? Okay, maybe about 10. So turns out that there's an algorithm called Loon's algorithm in which there's redundancy in the digits so that the system knows if it's a valid number or not. not just, it's not, not saying that all 16-digit credit cards are valid. No, there are actually only about, I think, 14, 15 digits that are valid, and the last digit is a comparison to make sure that it is correct, so that you had them all right. So if you have one digit wrong, it'll let you know that that's cool. It's kind of neat, right? Um, deflate is a very common algorithm for uh, lossless compression. We'll talk about lossy versus lossless compression, but deflate is an algorithm used for um, Compressing data in a way that means you lose no data. So you can take a big file that has a lot of white space or a picture that has a lot of blank areas and use this algorithm to compress it down so that you don't lose it. And when you decompress it, you get exactly the original again. It's really powerful. Um, and that's different from lossy. We'll talk about that later. I'm sure you've seen uh, Google and Facebook. And PageRank is the algorithm that made Google famous. That was the algorithm for determining We'll, talk, we'll actually see that in a little bit more detail when we see that uh, later in the course. Page rank is the algorithm for determining how prominent a website should be in the search results based on whether other prominent websites point to it. It's a very powerful algorithm that they invented at Stanford and built Google around that. It's pretty cool. Um, it has nothing to do with the fact that one of the founders is Larry Page. Page rank was about web pages, not about his name. It's kind of funny that way. Edge rank is the algorithm used to figure out what news items should appear in your feed. So Facebook has an algorithm as they're pushing things to you, as they think you might like this particular thing in your feed, not just, let's say your friends decide not to post anything interesting. So your feed would be idle that day. But in fact, no, Facebook is feeding it things based on this edge rank algorithm. OK, pretty cool stuff. Building blocks, this is the final slide. The building blocks of algorithms are the following. So 
there are four huge building blocks that you'll see here. And the four building blocks are sequencing, selection, iteration, and recursion. So sequencing, you've seen from this picture, indicates that commands, usually in, in programming languages, visual and text, appear. And this is not in a functional model where you have expressions that may be wrapped in other expressions. But I mean in a sequential or iterative model, you end up having blocks stacked in a graphical way. And it means that you do them one after the other. And you knew this at the first lab. So this is, I'm just telling you something. A word attaches something you knew how to do already. How do you read, do this, then this, and finally that? Well, you might have. We've actually had BJC students come to us with not a, I mean, most BJC students don't come to us with any programming experience. But they've come to us saying, hey, Dan, does that mean you do all three in parallel? And the semantics of the language could be that those three blocks appear in parallel. That's not how they work. Sequencing says they appear in sequence, one after the other. But we could have a version of, of SNAP in which, when you put them in a certain way, they appear in parallel. Um, and you're going to see how we'll be able to play with this with the launch block, where you can actually have two things running at the same time. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like tapping your head and rubbing it around. But that's not how this works. Sequencing is one after the other, and that's how this works. Selection, I'm sure you've seen this before in the labs, are, again, give you a name to something you know already, is when you make an if-then choice. When you're using the intelli when your program is using intelligence to say, based on this decision, and the code says, based on some test, it's either doing this or doing that. So it's making a fork. It's a fork in the road in your code. Okay? Iteration says you'll be doing something over and over and over based on either the number of times you want to do that, pre you know, set in advance, here repeat 10, or based on some test that may end up changing throughout the process, and then when it finally finds something, like repeat until I find the magic card, turn to the next card. OK, very common thing. And recursion, we've mentioned before. Again, this is the second time alluding to it. It's when the definition of a function uses the function itself to solve the problem Okay, on a smaller part of the problem. All right? So, so far we've seen the definition of what an algorithm is. We realized that algorithms aren't new. They're not new to humanity for 50 or 60 years. They have been around for thousands of years. Um, We've seen now a couple of the building blocks of algorithms here. And in the future lectures, lectures we're going to see different parts of this, how to express them in languages, and the power of those.